Hey guys, you might be wondering why you're seeing a new face on the thumbnail of a School of Send video. Have we officially been hacked? Not quite. We've actually invited some other content creators to join us on the channel in a way to give more variety to the content that we provide here for you guys. And also with myself having to you know, work on School of Send as well as Atrium at the same time, it's quite a lot from one person. We've actually added two new content creators, making School of Sense a five-man team at this point, which is quite exciting. And I think the two new content creators we've chosen are excellent. So today you're gonna to be seeing Finn from Finny FB Fragrances. I think he's a fantastic reviewer, a fantastic content creator. But we've given him the topic of pick only five fragrances for life because I feel like that's a great introductory video that kind of introduces you to Finn's style, his personality, and what kind of fragrances he likes. He is fantastic. I'll stop talking now, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, Finny FB Fragrances. Other than my dad asking me if I stole his credit card to buy more fragrances, the hardest question that I've ever had to answer is, if I could keep just five fragrances for life, what are the five that I would choose? Well, in this video, I'm gonna to attempt to answer that question, both fortunately and unfortunately for me. I have over 70 bottles of cologne behind me, which makes this question extremely difficult to answer, but I'm gonna do my best, and here are the five that I would keep for life. Before I get started, my actual name is Finn, but you might know me as FB Fragrances on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube. FB Fragrances is an acronym for the most handsome and sexiest fragrance influencer alive, except for Omar, of course. I'm a close second place though. But with that being said, let's get into it. The first fragrance that I have chosen to keep for the rest of my life. Don't worry, I'm not taking this decision lightly. I have chosen YSRY's EDP. Now, before I talk about this fragrance, I actually prefer the smell of YSRY Le Parfum, but I do believe that it suits an older crowd a little bit more. It's a bit more mature and it's a bit less versatile. So I feel like just having one for the rest of your life, YSRY EDP works better. But in terms of a fragrance that I actually prefer, I do think YSY Parfum smells better, but onto YSY ADP. This fragrance is fantastic, don't get me wrong. If I was gonna pull a Jeremy fragrance and describe it in just three words, I would go with athletic, youthful, and fresh. And also it's synthetic, if I could use four words. Green apple at the top with the bergamot, it's got the sage as well, it just gives it that soapiness. It's really, really addictive. This one, I actually, managed to make one of my really good friends signature scent. And the scent trail on this thing is awesome. When I spray it on myself, I feel like it doesn't perform that well. But whenever my friend wears it, he usually wears it at the gym. He's a sporty guy. He suits his fragrance perfectly. The scent trail is fantastic. And he said he only uses four sprays, which shows that the performance is still strong in 2024. Longevity, about eight hours, which is solid as well. This thing, the reason it's in my top five for life is because of its versatility. You can wear this for literally anything from gym, all the way to date nights. It would work for everything in between. However, when I cross the age of about 30, then maybe I probably wouldn't want this fragrance. That's the one issue. In terms of fragrance for the next decade, I would want this, but then after about the age of 30, if I could, I would switch over to using YSY Parfum. But Five for Life, YSY EDP, I'm gonna give this an 8.5 out of 10. And it's a fantastic fragrance, yeah. When choosing, you know, having that one blue fragrance for the rest of your life, because one of these five have to be just a popular designer blue fragrance that you can use for any occasion. Dior Sauvage EDP was my second choice. However, this one is slightly more played out. I feel like a lot of girls, when they smell it, they are reminded of their ex, but a lot of girls also love it. So it's a, it's a high risk, high reward. Bleu de Chanel EDP as well would be another one I'd consider, however, I just find it a lot more boring than YSY ADP. The sweetness from the green apple, I kind of like that little bit more synthetic touch that YSY ADP has. It's more sporty, it's more athletic. I feel like it suits me better. But Dior Sauvage and Bleu de Chanel are definitely two ones that I was thinking could go into the top five, but I'm choosing YSY ADP as the first fragrance I'm keeping for the rest of my life. The second fragrance that I am keeping for life is Zerjoff's most popular fragrance and that is Naxos. Now this one really had to grow on me. When I first sampled it about two years ago, when I first started to get into niche fragrances, this was actually the second niche fragrance that I ever sampled and I just didn't love it. I didn't buy a bottle right away. I bought a bottle about a year later, but man, this thing just grows on you like no other fragrance from my experience. Honey, tobacco, lavender. It smells both mature and youthful at the same time. I'm not sure how else to explain it. It is very sweet, it's definitely a gourmand. 
Uh, a lot of people ask, you know, because of the honey, the tobacco, the lavender, does it smell similar to Jean Paul Gaultier Lamel Elixir? No, it doesn't. This is just levels above it. It is blended so much better. The honey note is done better. And you know, I guess that's to be expected. This is a more expensive niche fragrance, but Naxos is so, so worth the money. This is an easy 9.5 out of 10 for me. And definitely a fragrance that I would keep for the rest of my life. Just like how the bottle looks, it smells. It literally just smells like luxurious, elegance in a bottle. This fragrance would be perfect for special occasions, like really special occasions. I'm talking, I'm talking weddings, I'm talking dinner parties, I'm talking the fanciest of the fanciest stuff I'll be going to in my life. Naxos will always be there for me and that's one of the main reasons I'm taking it, but it is also more versatile than what most people make it out to be. It's got some freshness. For some reason, this works fantastically well in the summertime. Not super, super hot days, but spring, early summer this fragrance will more than do the trick and then obviously in the winter as well it works the best but this is definitely more versatile than what people say this could be a great all year round signature and that's why i'm taking it parfums de mali ojan i own four parfums de malis leighton greenlee carlisle and ojan so why have i decided to choose ojan well i haven't decided to choose it because of its versatility it's probably the least versatile parfums de mali out there it's an extremely heavy gourmand apple, cinnamon, vanilla. It just it just smells so edible. It smells like you walked into a bakery that just opened in the morning and all of the scones, the apple pies have just been freshly baked. You're getting wafts of it in the air. Absolutely gorgeous. Another thing I love about Ojan is that it smells like Christmas in a bottle and Christmas just always has really good memories for me. This is the fragrance I would want to wear on Christmas morning when it's cold outside. Yes, I live in Australia, so that doesn't really work, but moving on from that, the performance on this thing is absolutely fantastic as well. Apparently, the new bottles with the silver cap perform worse. I can't speak on that though. I'm not sure if it was officially reformulated. I only own the old bottle of Parfums de Mali and the performance on my skin with this one is absolutely fantastic. Projection, moderate to strong, probably towards the strong side, and then longevity as well. I get an easy 10 hours. When I tested this, sprayed it on before bed, slept, had a good sleep, 10 hours, woke up, and it was still there on my wrist, which basically says it all. Performed fantastic, smells amazing. This is definitely not blind by safe though. It is very expensive. It's about 350 US dollars, and a lot of people will find this overly sweet and overpowering, but for me, it's perfect. This is gonna be my date nights if I end up going on any, it's gonna be my date nights, my formal events, my dinner, my going out scent at night time. And that is why it is on my five for life. Parfums de Mali Leighton is not on my five for life, but it was one I was considering taking over Ojan. It's another beautiful gourmand apple pie scent. It's a little bit less gourmand than uh, Ojan. It's more versatile, it's got some more freshness, but it's just not as addictive. It just doesn't really it just doesn't really do it for me compared to Ojan. I do actually wear Leighton more at the moment because of its versatility and because where I do live in Australia, it is so hot outside. But Leighton does not quite make it, but it's another 10 out of 10 fragrance. Prada Lom EDT is one of those fragrances where I just smelt it at the store and then fell in love with it so quickly that I just bought it at retail. I didn't even bother finding it on discounters. And this fragrance is one that I still love to this day and that is why it is at the number three spot in my five fragrances for life. Recently, I had the pleasure of trying Prada Lom Intense, and that one blew me away even more. Unfortunately though, they didn't have any in stock. They just had to test the bottle out, which is an absolute tragedy. It essentially takes this soapy iris with the amber, the woodiness, but then makes it more dark. It adds some leather, but the leather, I don't usually like leather fragrances, but the leather in Prada Lom Intense is done so well. It's blended perfectly it just adds some darkness it is a perfect going out evening scent whereas Prada Lom EDT is better just for the day during the summer when you need a dumb reach fragrance if I can only take one of these for life it would be Prada Lom Intense but since I don't have that Prada Lom EDT will more than do the job I absolutely love this fragrance it's just so easy to reach for it's similar to YSOY EDP in the sense that it's extremely versatile, but instead of being sporty, fresh, athletic, this one, in my opinion, is a bit more mature. So when I do eventually get an office job, as I'm sure I will, this one would be a great office signature scent for myself. Yeah, I would give this an 8.5 out of 10, just like YSOY EDP, but I'm taking it for life because of its versatility, because of its timeless nature, the timeless smell of it, and the bottle looks super 
super sleek as well. One downside to this, however, is that the performance is not fantastic on my skin. It is worse than YSLY's EDP performance. I get six, maybe seven hours longevity and the projection is definitely soft to moderate. I, I use seven sprays and even that, you know, the scent trail leaves isn't super strong, but that doesn't take away from the fact that it smells amazing. It's a timeless fragrance and I have no problem keeping this in my five for life out of my 70 bottles of fragrances behind me. The final fragrance that I am taking for life is the most difficult choice out of all five because it is a toss up between two MFK fragrances, Grand Soir and Oud Satin Mood. But today we're gonna to be picking Oud Satin Mood as the fragrance that I'm taking for life. Why? Well, because of the memories and nostalgia that this fragrance brings me. To me, it smells like a Turkish delight in a bottle and Turkish delights used to be my favorite treat when I was younger. So every time I smell this, I get fantastic, just amazing memories, the nostalgia of it. Plus for me, MFK fragrances are amazing because you always get what you pay for in terms of performance. This is probably one of the strongest fragrances I've ever tried. Probably top three strongest in my entire collection. Longevity, over 12 hours, probably close to 15 and projection, three and four sprays. Everyone will be smelling. It fills up every corner of every room, the scent trail, is absolutely intoxicating. However, this is definitely not a safe blind buy, not just because it's super expensive, but because many people that I've seen on Fragrantico especially believe that this fragrance leans heavily feminine, as in they could never picture a man wearing it. I'm gonna have to disagree with that though. I think this is almost as perfectly unisex as it gets. And Oud Satin Mood x leans a little bit more masculine. However, just like something like Zerzhov Herba Pura, it's gonna have mixed opinions on whether it's feminine or masculine. So make sure you try it first. But this is one definitely worth getting your nose on and probably my favorite fragrance of all time. That is gonna be a wrap on the five fragrances I've chosen to keep for the rest of my life. I hope you guys enjoyed the FB Fragrances X Omar from School of Scent crossover video. That feels kind of weird to say, but hopefully there'll be many more to come. I'm going to be posting on this channel hopefully like once or twice a week, so stay tuned for that. If you want to check me out on any of my individual platforms, look out for the description below. You'll find me on TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube. But yeah, let me know in the comments what you thought of my list of the five fragrances, and let me know what five fragrances you are choosing for the rest of your life. If you enjoyed the video, again, like, subscribe, comment down below, and I hope you guys have a good rest of your day.